Do you believe in mysterious creatures? Beasts and beauties that dot our planet with legends. Stories that are whispered in dank corners to become myth. Some people become so enthralled and convinced of such things that they dedicate their entire lives to making them real for others. When I was a boy, my parents bought a two and a half acre piece of property maybe 20 minutes outside of Bowdoin, Alberta. A little piece of rural heaven called Silver Lagoon. A chunk of farmer's land sliced up into 18 or so lots, some backing onto a long, thin, horseshoe-shaped lagoon. More like a swamp, really. Created by Mother Earth and beavers, but glorious just the same. Our lot was two acres grass and an acre or so of woodland. It would take many years for my parents to build their dream cottage on the property, so for a good chunk of my childhood, a tent trailer with a large plastic tarp over it and a small picnic area was the kingdom of my imagination. We would do the hour or so drive from Calgary almost every weekend and holiday. It was a fantastic place to grow up. I don't know if I was much help in the construction of the cabin, but I did what I could when I wasn't exploring or lost in its natural splendor. We had a rowboat, and if you wore your life vest, could take it out on your own, tugging ore to water along the entire lagoon's length. Properties on one side, wilderness on the other. When the water was still and dusk blasted crimsons and pumpkin brights across the sky, time would evaporate. On one particular day, while floating upon a sweet floral afternoon breeze, oars unattended, with mosquitoes, dragonflies, and horseflies around my head, and water spiders, minnows, and tadpoles beneath the surface, I was disturbed from my dreams by a sensation, as if I were being watched. Not necessarily a creepy feeling, but unsettling nonetheless. Then there came a sound on the shore of the wilds, like heavy feet on brittle twigs. The sun positioned such that the shore and brush were mostly shadowed. Now deer and moose would saunter through our property to nibble on garden vegetables or simply as a shortcut. Porcupines, skunks, squirrels, and moles were permanent tenants. Mum and Dad had mentioned bear and mountain lion, but these caretakers I had never spotted. More twigs cracked branches pushed aside, a grunt like a snort from nostrils wide belched from the dim. I quietly and slowly regained control of the boat, putting oars to hand and concentrated all my sight on the tree line at the water's edge, where a tall, blacker shape began to rise, like a colossal all bird song becoming still. The mass eventually stopped its reach towards the sky and seemed to simply pause, as if it were just as confused by me as I was by it. I could hear the deep breaths it drew, could smell its pungent cologne like wet dog and blue cheese. There, there was an agelessness about it, if mountains could walk and fill their lungs. For how long we stared the other down, I cannot say. But eventually something else drew its attention, and with a few thunderous footfalls, was gone. Was it a Sasquatch? Some would balk at the mere thought Now, I haven't told many up till now for fear of mockery, and this was over 45 years ago. 
I did not witness its face, full shape, or anything that would convince someone else of what I saw. But what I felt. If I could describe or make you experience that, then you would be a believer indeed. And another keeper of myth and legend.